Hey, Grant. For an old dog, you still move really fast. Um, God, how did I start this? I'm not even sure what to title this one yet. So, before I got into steampunk, I was into historical reenactment. We're talking 20 something years back. And in that classification was several different options even then. There was the SCA, of course, uh, Society of Creative Anachronism. Um, and then you had your, your watered down variants, the Rennie Fair and whatnot. What I found myself getting more into was Mountain Men, Colonial War era, uh, French uh, Indian War trade, as you can tell by the Hudson Bay blankets here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be slowly panning over my kids as we talk about this. But the reason for making this was actually, um, what is steampunk? Dick, you hear that question a lot, and you hear a lot of definitions. Some actually make sense, some have a ring of truth, and some just give me giggle fits. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, I've had a lot of people recently saying, you know, you've got a lot, a, lot, a lot of steampunk kit for a traveler, you know, how do you do it? And I'm like... Well, part of this research. I'm not trying to jerry rig some, you know, German rucksack into a. And there's my dog playing with one of his balls. Bastard. Anyway, um. It. I just got sidetracked. Anyway, uh, thank you, Grant. But. For me, a lot of it's just. I, I made a point of collecting a lot of the, the Mountain Man and French colonial. Uh, colonial War era stuff. And just incorporating it into my kit. You know, I have some tech as well. I have a laptop, obviously, the smartphone. They're shooting this thing on uh, as we speak. But, you know, there's my flintlock and my howdy pistol. And my f f uh, Captain Ball 44. All the goo and doodahs that go with it. My flute. Um, canteen. Big-ass lantern that I have yet to fix. Thank you, Jeff. This is, is going to be a fun project, actually. Um, my sewing kits. Uh, my flint steel kit, which is actually right here, um, tobacco leaves hanging up to dry and getting ready to smoke, because I'm goofy like that. Anyway, um, but part of the reason why I was doing this is, it's not that this is how steampunk is done, or this is how historical reenactment is done, this is how I do it. Um, it's a really strong leaning in, in historical accuracy equipment that just seems to go hand in hand really easily with um uh doing a steampunk um for instance let me sit down oh god yeah i'm getting old fuck it anyway this for instance is a primus 210 kerosene stove it looks like it was all but fabricated for the steampunk scene yeah not even close this thing was made in 1953 to give you an idea it runs on kerosene which is what's in here. Um, and it has one moving part. The pump check valve. Which is what keeps... Lets you push air into the tank. And keeps fuel from coming back out, of course. Um, this is the bleed valve to bleed off pressure. Some people apparently have been known to use white gas or gasoline in these things. And that's the reason why you don't hear from them on YouTube anymore. <laughs> because they went thud. Anyway. Um, my coffee pot my coffee grinder, my kettle, and the thing is, in most of these cases, most of these things, like the kettle here, for instance, it's actually something available from historical reenactment sites. Uh, CrazyCrow.com carries them, American Frontier Company, uh, Trading Company in Seattle carries them, and they're all rough about the same, by 80 bucks. My pipe, my cigars, anyway. Um, my wash basin, um, frying pan, Little folding handle, little mountain man trucker skillet, you know. Um, but and this is what I mean. These are in, actually that thing's not even you know steampunk or uh, necessarily colonial. As a matter of fact, it's about I don't know 30, 40 years old, probably about as old as me maybe. And it just works. It's copper and brass. It's cute. It's pretty. It's, hell, it's even dented. Why not? Um, the stoves you can only get it through eBay nowadays because uh, Primus stopped making them in 1963. But, with a little bit of experience, unfortunately that usually involves buying two or three of the fucking things, um, and cobbling one together out of them, um, this one happens to actually be a, um, what's called a, uh, 210 Sport, 
which is in reference specifically to the, the clamshell box and the pull-out tray with the, the spirit tin and the uh, the spanner for breaking it down, the prickers for uh, cleaning out the jet. Um, is any of this stuff cheap? <laughs> yeah, not really, no. Uh, but then again, if you think about it, neither is modern camping gear. Um, yeah, Self-entertained. Anyway, um... I mean, you're looking for really top end camping gear. You're looking at you know several several hundred dollar bedroll. You're looking at upwards of a thousand dollar for a tent, and we're talking top end shit here, of course. Thing is, I mean, that's exactly what I paid for mine. The difference is, mine one looks good in a historical reenactment site, or a steampunk in, in Byron. Um, and more to the point, frankly, because it's made of canvas and wool, you know, good old virgin wool, um, it'll last. For years, um, as a traveler, I have made the mistake of trying to uh, use modern equipment, and I found myself regripping my equipment every two years. And we're talking North Face and Mountain Hardware. We're not talking Coleman crap from Fred Myers here. We're talking top end crap, and I was still having to regrip every two friggin' years. Uh, the epiphany I had, and it's actually what started the whole Mountain Man trip in the first place, was. Uh, um, that the last tents that were designed to be lived in were made of canvas. Period. Hands down. Um, and before that, leather. And I ain't carrying no fucking leather tent. I love working with leather. I made that knife sheath. I made a bunch of my pouches and whatnot. No, I didn't make the holster for the howdy pistol. That actually came with it from Dixie Gunworks. Anyway. Um, actually, now I think about it, very little of the stuff on that wall did I actually make. I made the holster for the 44 and the knife sheath. And that's about it on this wall. Anyway. anyway um, but... Like I said, this isn't to win an argument about what is or not steampunk, etc. This is more to the point, just this is how I do it. Um, and how I've gotten to the point where I'm at at this point. I'm 45 years old. I've been doing historical reenactment off and on since my teens and 20s. Um, and have tried, not always successfully, but have tried to retain the equipment I, I got for that. And um, incorporate it into my life. The other thing I did, obviously, as some people have caught from my post last year was I made this little steampunk monstrosity called a bike. Well, I didn't make it. I actually bought the bike and then did all the add-ons and goo-gaws, the, the brass fenders and the light system that everyone remembers from before. But unfortunately, some tweaker tried ripping off the fucking frame and basically destroyed the brass box everything was mounted to. I'm going to have to rebuild that. Um, I'm actually presently... The reason why there's no water ball uh, cages in the middle of the frame is I'm actually going to be making one of those internal frame bags that I posted all those uh, Swiss military bikes about um, a week ago or so, or something like that. Anyway, um, you know, there's a bike in the trailer. There's a dog again. This little pirate collar. <laughs> Too funny. Anyway, I had to. I'm sorry. Anyway, but, yeah, I mean, there's, to quote a line from one of the Fast and Furious movies, there's no wax on, wax off to this. I mean, there's... You can whack off all you want. Just don't do it online. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of options out there that are actually completely prefabbed. They weren't designed with the spring, uh, steampunk uh, context. They were just made, well, frankly, to work. I mean, to give you an idea of these things, Prime's got their original, um, uh, what do they call it, copyright, or patent, excuse me, uh, in 1891. Can't get a whole lot more, more uh, steampunk than that. Uh, <laughs> and they started dating these things, putting a date stamp on the bottom of the tank um, in 1911. The oldest one I've had was 1917. This one's from 1953. I have another one from 1925 I've been trying to sell. Um, as of yet, no buyers, whatever. Um, but, you know, carbide lamps, um, old kerosene pressure stoves, and, and pressure lanterns. That, where the hell did it go? There it is. Big gun. Um, these things are prefabbed for their intended purpose, but they work so bloody well. You don't have to rip apart old pocket watches and glue cogs to your freaking baseball cap and call it steampunk. Show some originality. Do some research. Do some homework. Look into it a bit. Okay? That's all I'm asking. Um, not a whole lot more to say. Uh, Doing a little show and tell. By the way, for the record, yes, I really am that ugly. Um, 
just had you, sorry. No cracks in the screen. Good. All right, cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, any questions, please feel free to, to ask. I mean, uh, I have been collecting this stuff for a long time and have no problems actually uh, answering questions in, in, as far as actual facts and whatnot. If you come at me with political crap, I'll just delete your ass. I don't give a shit. Okay? Have a good one. Bye-bye.